In Luke chapter number 18, the Lord Jesus is passing through Jericho. What is Jericho? Jericho at one time was the oldest city in the world after the flood of Noah. This oldest city that had never been conquered had very wide walls and the walls were very high. And even if Israel had tried to take in hammers and tried to hammer the wall down, it could take a year or years to destroy it completely. But just by obeying God and marching round about those walls with a great shout, the Bible says on the last day, the seventh day, went around seven times. And then they had a great shout. When they had the holy cry, the walls tumbled and fell down flat. So what made the walls to fall was the seven days of obedience. And the holy cry led by the Levites and the priests who were in front, seconded by Israel, which were behind them. It was the cry of worship, the cry of prayer, the cry of praise that made God to pull down the high walls. Now, thousands, over a thousand years later, the Lord Jesus is passing through that same city. And there was a man who was blind and begging. So if being blind is one problem, Begging is a second problem. You are blind and poor. He was seeing darkness and he had no money. So when he heard that Jesus is passing by, the Bible said, he cried out. Wait a minute. This is not the first time when Jericho heard a cry. The cry we hear in Joshua's time was a cry and a shout of victory, of praise, and a shout of prayer and acknowledgement of God's power. And that cry conquered the city. Now a blind man is crying to Jesus, calling him son of David. Now, who is David? David is a king. He's not only a king, he's a king who was known for showing mercy. So in other words, he's saying, Lord, I'm crying because I know crying works. This city has a history of God's response to a cry. And number two, I'm not just crying willy-nilly. I'm crying accurately toward Jesus. Do you know that Jesus can pass you by and leave you blind if you don't know when to cry? Whenever you feel the presence of God around you, it's time to cry, son of David, have mercy on me. The man cried and the Lord stopped. A real godly cry who stopped Jesus on his tracks. And when the Lord was stopped, he turned around and he said to him, what do you want me to do for you? How ironic. Lord Jesus, the man is blind. Isn't it obvious that he wants to see? That's not how God operates. Because God will operate by your tongue. Your tongue is the pen of a ready writer. Your tongue, it sets tone to how God is going to move in your situation. So be careful of the words you say after crying in church. You may cry mercy. But after church, what's your talk? The Bible says, he said, I want to see. The Lord touched him, his eyes were opened, and his eyesight was restored. Why? Because he said, I want to see. The Lord wanted him to say it. I'm going to give you three things you must never do with your words or with your tongue. Proverbs chapter 18, verse 20 says, A man's belly shall be filled by the fruit of his lips, and his mouth shall be filled by the words that he speaks. Death and life, verse 21, is in the power of the tongue, and he will love you to eat the fruit thereof. Which means whenever you open your mouth, 
you are on trial. Whenever you open your mouth, you are on trial because Matthew 12 verse 37 says, by your words, you are justified and by your words, you are condemned. Do you know there are people who cry out to God, son of David, have mess on me. I need a new income that will satisfy my needs. After that, they open their mouth and they begin to curse their income. They begin to curse themselves. They begin to invite negative spirits by the word of their mouth. Whenever you open your mouth, either you're about to release death or you're about to release life. Our nation is not going to be wiped out with COVID. I was driving on my way here and I was stopped by the police roadblock. So when the police roadblock stopped me, immediately the sergeant who was there recognized me. So she wavered at the police uh, guy who was talking to me and said, uh, stop him, stop him, let him not pass. I want to talk to him. So the lady came and said, I'm a sergeant. I'm in charge here. I know you, you are Apostle Java. Do you have your book, uh, African Religion, A Blessing or a Curse? I said, unfortunately, I don't have it, but I want to promise you that I'm going to make a copy available for you. So the other uh, uh, subordinate said, I want it too. Then I wrote a note and I signed it that herself and all the people who were working there were going to get the Arab book and a this kind copy for free. Then this is what she said. She said, but Apostle Java, we are so afraid because this disease has come to wipe us out completely. I said, officer, I reverse your words. We are not going to be wiped out completely. We are going to overcome this disease. We are going to overcome this pandemic. The Bible never said a virus shall come and end the world. The Bible said rapture will come first, then the tribulation and the end of the world. The Lord will preserve us, the Lord will preserve you, and we shall do all the medicinal and all the doctor's advice to stay safe, but our safety is primarily from the Lord. And immediately I began to pray for Zimbabwe. I said, in the name of Jesus Christ, Zimbabwe, you are free from the siege of COVID-19 pandemic. That officer was, was so happy and said, I've never heard words of faith. As you drive, please speak about my two children. She gave me the names of her children, gave me the name of her husband, said, keep speaking, man of God. I am so happy. I am so happy. And I want you to be so happy. By never opening your mouth to say, this marriage is coming to nothing. By never opening your mouth and saying, this relationship is amounting to nothing. By never opening your mouth and saying, I hate all men. I will never trust a man. All men are like dogs. Because whenever you open your mouth, you are already on trial. Either you are justified or you are condemned. Because the power of death or life is not in the hands of Satan. The power of death and life is in your tongue. What will kill your business is in your tongue. What will kill your job is in your tongue. What will kill your friendship is in your tongue. So whenever you open your mouth, you are on trial. And whenever you open your mouth, death or life is about to come out. So the three things I want to give you is number one, never speak negatively when you are angry. When you are angry, let your words be few. Normally when I am angry, I get a message, I'm angry. I'm at the office, I'm angry. Somebody does something that makes me angry. I've learned not to react. I get home, I go on my bicycle, and I start jogging on my bicycle or I go on a treadmill and I run five kilometers or I simply go out and take my seven kilometer walk with worship in my ears. When the anger is gone, I open my mouth. And if you know ABJ, if you have stayed with ABJ, scripture will come out. Because whenever you speak, either death or life 
is coming out. Never speak when you are angry. Number two, never speak when you are grieved. When you are under grief, lady, maybe you had a miscarriage. Don't say, I will never have children. I have closed the door. Because by your words, you are justified. By your words, you are condemned. Remember how God created the heavens and the earth. In the beginning, he created the heavens and the earth. On the second day, he began, then he began to set order on earth. How did he do it? He spoke 10 times. And after speaking 10 times, there was order in heaven. There was order on earth. There were trees, seed bearing and fruit bearing. And there were all kinds of fishes. There were all kinds of fowls of the air. There were all kinds of animals and beasts. Adam and Eve, our ancestors, were created by God's ten sayings. He spoke ten times and everything that is was. Today I can eat bread because God commanded the wheat grains to produce nutrients that makes bread. Today I can eat and have vitamins because God commanded oranges to give us vitamin C. He commanded uh, grapes to give us vitamin B. He commanded bananas to give us uh, vitamin uh, uh, A. He commanded a carrot to give us vitamin E. When he was speaking, every kind of food was responding presently and futuristic to the word of God. And man shall not live by bread alone, but shall live by what comes from where they came from. That was Jesus' answer when Satan tried to seduce him by saying, ten stones to bread and eat. He said, man shall not live by bread alone. Becasin and lobus shall not be our source of bread alone, but man shall live by the words of the person from where he came from. We don't only live by physical food, but we also live by abiding from our source. Listen as I close. Number three, never speak when you are frustrated. Never. When you're under frustration, when you're bored, when you're fatigued, don't curse, don't speak. You destroy your future by your words of today. When you open your mouth, you are on trial. That man shouted and his shout stopped Jesus. Jesus said, what can I do for you? It was an open check. The CEO of the universe said, what can I do for you? And he only asked one thing. I want to see. Say, poverty is as evil as the devil itself. And the devil is a real bastard, I tell you. Because a poor man begging, who is also blind, only remembered one problem. Because after his eyes were open, say you are now an elderly man, perhaps with no skill, perhaps with no real education, which makes you competent to people who have had sight all along. Instead of saying, I want to see, and I want to start a business. He only said, I want to see. Perhaps Jesus could have said, you can see, then go to my son Zacchaeus and ask him for two million dollars. The man's life could have changed, but he didn't know the power in his tongue. That the same power that gave him sight is the same power that can change his fortunes. The same confession that gave you Jesus is the same confession that gives you the Holy Spirit and is the same confession that will change your life. Prayer is not only when you are on your knees. Prayer is always when you open your mouth. Death and life is in the power of your tongue. And whenever you give a holy cry in prayer, you must support it by holy words. God bless you.